So in terms of uh, patients who are ineligible for intensive therapies with either IDH1 or IDH2 mutations, IDH1 is perhaps easier because there is a good amount of data uh, with uh, two regimens that we have available. Uh, one is azacitidine and venetoclax. Azacitidine and venetoclax in general is a very good regimen across the board in AML patients in almost all categories excepting some. Uh, but with IDH mutations in general, you see a high rate of response and a nice uh, median overall survival. The median overall survival um, for um, um, IDH1 mutated patients is even more pronounced when you actually use another combination, this time with azacitidine and the IDH1 inhibitor ivocidinib. You have a median overall survival that approaches 24, 25 months, and that's pretty amazing in older patients who are not induction eligible. So I would say for IDH1 mutated patients, probably if they have relatively indolent disease or uh, non-proliferative disease, probably my choice would be azacitidine and ivocidinib, although azacitidine and venetoclax is also not wrong and perhaps appropriate in certain settings. Sometimes we don't know the IDH mutational status, and we have to make a determination in these patients, and I think HMA and venetoclax is fine. For IDH2 mutated patients, it's a little bit trickier because we don't have as much data with the combination of azacitidine and an IDH2 inhibitor such as and We have some, but that data in a phase two uh, study was not positive uh, in terms of overall survival, but the response rates were higher with the combination, and it's not approved for use as, the, as is azacitidine and IVO. So for IDH2 inhibitor, in IDH2 mutated patients, I would say the choice is probably still just azacitidine and venetoclax for those patients.